Angkor Wat Angkor Wat is a temple complex in Cambodia and the largest religious monument in the world by land area, on a site measuring 162.6 hectares. Originally constructed as a Hindu temple dedicated to the god Vishnu for the Khmer Empire, it was gradually transformed into a Buddhist temple towards the end of the 12th century, and as such it is also described as a Hindu Buddhist temple. It was built by the Khmer king Second Surya Varman in the early 12th century in Usodarapura, the capital of the Khmer Empire, as his state temple and eventual mausoleum. Breaking from the Shaiva tradition of previous kings, Angkor Wat was instead dedicated to Vishnu. As the best preserved temple at the site, it is the only one to have remained a significant religious center since its foundation. The temple is at the top of the high classical style of Khmer architecture. It has become a symbol of Cambodia, appearing on its national flag, and it is the country's prime attraction for visitors. Angkor Wat combines two basic plans of Khmer temple architecture, the Temple Mountain and the later Gallery Temple. It is designed to represent Mount Meru, home of the Devas in Hindu mythology, within a moat more than 5 km long and an outer wall 3.6 km long are three rectangular galleries, each raised above the next. At the center of the temple stands a quincunx of towers. Unlike most Angkorian temples, Angkor Wat is oriented to the west, scholars are dividing as to the significance of this. The temple is admired for the grandeur and harmony of the architecture, its extensive bari leaves, and for the numerous devantas adorning its walls. History Angkor Wat lies 5.5 kilometers north of the modern town of Siem Reap, and a short distance south and slightly east of the previous capital, which was centered at Bafuan. In an area of Cambodia where there is an important group of ancient structures, it is the southernmost of Angkor's main sites. According to a myth, the construction of Angkor Wat was ordered by Indra to serve as a palace for his son Prichikit Mili. According to the 13th century Chinese traveler Zhu Deguin, some believe that the temple was constructed in a single night by a divine architect. The initial design and construction of the temple took place in the first half of the 12th century, during the reign of Simkhan Surya Varman. Dedicated to Vishnu, it was built as the king's state temple and capital city. As neither the foundation still in or any contemporary inscriptions referring to the temple have been found, its original name is unknown, but it may have been known as Vera Vishnu Lok after the presiding deity. Work seems to have ended shortly after the king's death, leaving some of the bar-relief decoration unfinished. The term Vra Visnya Loka or Parama Visnya Loka literally means the king who has gone to the supreme world of Vishnu, which referred to Second Surya of Arman posthumously and intend to venerate his glory and memory. In 1177, approximately 27 years after the death of Surya of Arman II, Angkor was sacked by the Chams, the traditional enemies of the Khmer. Thereafter the empire was restored by a new king, Jai Varman VII, who established a new capital and state temple a few kilometers to the north. Towards the end of the 12th century, Angkor Wat gradually transformed from a Hindu center of worship to Buddhism, which continues to the present day. Angkor Wat is unusual among the Angkor temples in that although it was largely neglected after the 16th century it was never completely abandoned. Fourteen inscriptions dated from the 17th century discovered in Angkor area testify to Japanese Buddhist pilgrims that had established small settlements alongside Khmer locals. At that time, the temple was thought by the Japanese visitors as the famed Jatavana Garden of the Buddha, which originally located in the kingdom of Magadha, India. The best known inscription tells of Yukanda Yukas Yafusa, who celebrated the Khmer New Year at Angkor Wat in 1632.
One of the first Western visitors to the temple was Antonio de Madalena, a Portuguese friar who visited in 1586 and said that it is of such extraordinary construction that it is not possible to describe it with the pen, particularly since it is like no other building in the world. It has towers and decoration and all the refinements which the human genius can conceive of. In 1860, the temple was effectively rediscovered by the French naturalist and explorer Henri Mouat, who popularized the site in the West through the publication of travel notes, in which he wrote. One of these temples, a rival to that of Solomon, and erected by some ancient Michelangelo, might take an honorable place beside our most beautiful buildings. It is grander than anything left to us by Greece or Rome, and presents a sad contrast to the state of barbarism in which the nation is now plunged. The splendid artistic legacy of Angkor Wat and other Khmer monuments in the Angkor region led directly to France adopting Cambodia as a protectorate on August 11, 1863 and invading Siam to take control of the ruins. This quickly led to Cambodia reclaiming lands in the northwestern corner of the country that had been under Siamese control since AD 1351, or by some accounts. A.D. 1431. There were no ordinary dwellings or houses or other signs of settlement, including cooking utensils, weapons, or items of clothing usually found at ancient sites. Instead, there was only evidence of the monuments themselves. A French exploration commission began drawing up a list of principal monuments. Subsequent missions copied inscriptions written on Angkor buildings so scholars might translate them and learn something of Angkor's history. By 1885 they had worked up a chronology of the rulers and developed the outlines of a description of the civilization that had produced the temple complex. In 1898 the French decided to commit substantial funds to Angkor's preservation. Centuries of neglect had permitted the jungle to recapture many of the more significant structures, and unless efforts were made to free the buildings from the embrace of huge banyan and silk cotton trees, they might soon be crushed to destruction. Angkor Wat's aesthetics were also on display in the plaster cast museum of Louis Delaporte called Musée Indochinois, which existed in the Parisian Trocadero Palace from circa 1880 to the mid 1920s. The 20th century saw a considerable restoration of Angkor Wat. Gradually teams of laborers and archaeologists pushed back the jungle and exposed the expanses of stone, permitting the sun once again to illuminate the dark corners of the temple. Angkor Wat caught the attention and imagination of wider audience in Europe when the pavilion of French Protectorate of Cambodia, as part of French Indochina, recreated the life-size replica of Angkor Wat during Paris Colonial Exposition in 1931. Cambodia gained independence from France on November 9, 1953 and has controlled Angkor Wat since that time. It is safe to say that from the colonial period onwards until the site's nomination as UNESCO World Heritage 1992, this specific temple of Angkor Wat was instrumental in the formation of the modern and gradually globalized concept of built cultural heritage. Bullet holes left by a shootout between the Khmer Rouge and Vietnamese forces at Angkor Wat. Restoration work was interrupted by the Cambodian Civil War and Khmer Rouge control of the country during the 1970s and 1980s, but relatively little damage was done during this period. Camping Khmer Rouge forces used whatever wood remained in the building structures for firewood, and a shootout between Khmer Rouge and Vietnamese forces put a few bullet holes in a bas relief. Far more damage was done after the wars by art thieves working out of Thailand, which, in the late 1980s and early 1990s, claimed almost every head that could be lopped off the structures, including reconstructions.
The temple is a powerful symbol of Cambodia, and is a source of great national pride that has factored into Cambodia's diplomatic relations with France, the United States, and its neighbor Thailand. A depiction of Angkor Wat has been a part of Cambodian national flag since the introduction of the first version circa 1863. From a larger historical and even transcultural perspective, however, the temple of Angkor Wat did not become a symbol of national pride sui generis but had been inscribed into a larger politico-cultural process of French colonial heritage production in which the original temple site was presented in French colonial and universal exhibitions in Paris and Marseille between 1889 and 1937. In December 2015, it was announced that a research team from University of Sydney had found a previously unseen ensemble of buried towers built and demolished during the construction of Angkor Wat, as well as a massive structure of unknown purpose on its south side and wooden fortifications. The findings also include evidence of low-density residential occupation in the region, with a road grid, ponds, and mounds. These indicate that the temple precinct bounded by moat and wall, may not have been used exclusively by the priestly elite, as was previously thought. The team used LIDAR, ground-penetrating radar and targeted excavation to map Angkor Wat, 